Um, I'm going to read my first email, my first and only email from uh, Councilman Khalil Rafai. Good, mor good evening, Mayor, colleagues, and Hamtramck residents. Uh, in regards to proclamation recognitions and uh, presentations, one, thank you, Mayor, Council, and City Administration for recognizing Noor Al Kafi for her contributions to the community and to those in need. Hopefully, she will inspire others to do the same. Thank you, Razan Kalawi, for her contributions to the arts and culture of Hamtramck, specifically her art installment faces of Hamtramck. She deserves to be recognized and receive a certificate from our city government. Thank you to Nazma Khan for advocating World Hijab Day proclamation since 2013, much appreciated. Uh, new Business C, Resolution 2312 and 13. I encourage the mayor and my colleagues to approve both of these resolutions as it's about time for the reconstruction of CNIF. I'm glad that our city was granted 82% of the cost from the Federal Aid Assistance Grant that's to reconstruct CNIF Street from Conant Street to Buffalo Street with complete removal and replacement of the roadway, new storm drainage facilities, new sidewalk facilities including the placement of sidewalk ramps to current Americans with Disabilities Act requirements. Uh, thank you, Rana, for your hard work. Thank you, Mayor, Council, and City Administration. Message to my constituents and business owners, please shovel and salt your sidewalks when needed. Much, appreci much appreciated. Good night. God bless you all. Please stay safe and warm. Khalil Rafai. Thank you. Was that under two, three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Blasey, please. Thanks. Hello, Mayor and Council. Um, Can I be proactive and ask for a minute? Awesome. Thank you. Restart. <laughs> Did you restart? So four minutes, yep. Okay. <laughs> I started right when you stand up there. So the faster you talk. Um, I also, um, echoing Khalil, want to send an extra congratulations to Noor, even though she's left. Um, I'm sure she didn't do those things expecting an award, um, but it's really important to recognize when our young people go above and beyond. Um, one, to encourage them, but also to show others that that is important. Um, to be aware and that she act with clear, acted with clear mind in those moments. It's really outstanding, um, especially for her age. I also would like to um, so send extra congratulations to Razan. Um, I'm so glad that she was chosen for the installation at 9414 Joseph Campo. Um, her installation is still up. And I just want everyone to be aware that painting 28 portraits that are recognizable of real human beings that live in Hamtramck and work in Hamtramck is no easy feat, especially as a full-time art student at U of M. So I just wanted to give an extra, you know, Arts and Culture Commission um, uh, pat on the back to uh, Razan for that. And to mention that her exhibit is on display and continuing to be on display um, at 9414 Joseph Campo. Um, that's the east side of Campo between Florian and Poland. Um, until the remodeling of that building is finished. So it'll be up there for a couple years. Um, and then I also wanted to say that um, World of Job Day um, to the people watching is a really great way to encourage conversation around the hijab. Um, it's an opportunity to confront bias in a really constructive way. Um, and when I participate, I'm able to enter conversations with my supervisors, people I work with, people that I see on the street, um, and engage with them and help educate them about um, our Muslim sisters uh, worldwide. So I think it's really important that our city acknowledges that. <coughs> now to um, more boring agenda items. 2023-08, I just want to thank our city for our commitment to, ongo to um, ongoing commitment to find funding, funding for infrastructure um, for our alleys, 2023-09. Um, um, I just had a question if this uh, agenda item was in relation to the last homes for the Sarah Garrett lawsuit. Um, the language was a little bit um, lawyery. Um, <laughs> it was legalese, so it's hard to decipher um, it is. <laughs> what that was in relation to. And then um, just a little bit of clarification around 2023, um, 12 and 13. It seems like those are very related and um, the relationship between them is MDOT is like the boss of the project, Hennessy is contracted to supervise the project, and then Mark Anthony contracting are the people on the ground doing the work. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and I have, still have time? Yep. Awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> and lastly, I'd like to uh, thank- 40 the, seconds. Oh shoot. 
thank the Historic Museum uh, for their accessibility and coming out into the community. Um, DCFC did a cleanup and Greg came and spoke about the history of Veterans Park to the group. Um, and the museum is often open to any community group that needs a place to meet. And I really appreciate that as a demonstration of the connection between the museum and the community. Um, and I also just wanted to personally thank the fire department for their continuing support filling up the water wagon to um, plant the, to water the flowers in the planter boxes on Joseph Campo. So thank you. Five seconds, <coughs> say something else. I appreciate you all. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Beth Leslie, more walk, welcome, three minutes. Um, I just had three things I wanted to comment. One, um, I believe you said in the World Hijab Day proclamation, which was lovely, that um, expressions of hate should not exist in a free society. And I know that many times this council has doubled down on anti-gay hatred. And um, for that reason, I'd like to, now that the there is public a disclosure of the names for um, city manager candidate, I'd like to ask you not to put somebody in that position who has videos of him out there equating homosexuality to bestiality. Because one of those candidates, uh, Kamal Rahman, does have that. Um, I think we've seen how long the news cycle will stay on a Nazi flag that is up for five hours. I'm sure they would love to double down on this. And as a non-Muslim neighbor, I already have enough time trying to explain to people that we don't follow Sharia law. That's going to double down on that. Um, secondly, when you, I know there was some concern about the number of times in mutual aid in which we um, go out to help our neighbors as opposed to our neighbors help us. You should thank them for that. That's free on the job training that we're getting, where they'd otherwise be sitting around in a class getting a theory of how they're going to be doing that. They're out there actually getting it as opposed to sitting around waiting for an alarm to go off, which is um, uh, other than education, mostly what a firefighter does. So we're getting on the job training. We should be thankful for that and thankful that we are allowed to meet federal standards without having to take a larger chunk of our budget to address our own local issues and take advantage of our neighbor's technology that we may or may not have, like a younger truck, for instance. Um, third, the concept that you all would consider putting cameras at the border of the city. I have seen this occur once. It was when I was working on my dissertation. It was disclosed to me by a sheriff deputy for an all-white community that exists outside of New Orleans that has three borders with New Orleans. So they put cameras at each of those borders. And honest, and they wouldn't tell that to the public, but they would in a white supremacy meeting that I got into. And so just think about what sort of message you're sending to your neighbors when you do that. Because again, these news cycles can be long, especially when it deals with bigotry and people wanting to cast our community as a community that is not wanting to follow democracy. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Mr. Blaine Coleman <coughs> from Ann Arbor, welcome. Three minutes, sir. Hi, thanks. So uh, you got in your email the proposal to pass a resolution, or let's say even a proclamation, uh, with seven pretty simple words. We are against military aid to Israel. Um, I think that everybody here reads the news carefully. Everybody here is aware of really the massive, <coughs> massive damage that Israel has caused with US funding, US political support, wall-to-wall -wall political support for so many years. So many thousands of people killed directly by Israel with our tax money, with our tax money. And you know that's not right. We should not be paying for Israel to kill thousands of Palestinians, which it does regularly. And beyond that, and that's a horrible thing, but beyond that, it encourages everyone in the world to treat Arabs and Muslims in general as very disposable, very killable, without any substantial reason having to be given. And so it, there are two reasons that I would push this resolution, if, if I may. The first reason is the humanitarian reason of saving Palestinian lives. Second reason is setting a good example. This is an example for other city councils, and Hamtramck could really put itself on the map as a human rights champion this way. Well, I guess I should mention a third thing, too, because of the value of human life, Palestinian life, Arab life, Muslim life, and right now, 
in the American political scene, there is not enough respect for Arab life, for Muslim life. And I think this is a gesture that you could make that wouldn't take long. A resolution or a proclamation, if you prefer, that is very, very simple. No need to argue fine points for pages and pages. Very simple. We are against military aid to Israel, period. Um, feel free to email me. You've got my email. Uh, if you need to call me, I'll give you my number. Uh, and I'll be leaving in a few minutes, so just grab me if you have questions. Does anyone want a copy of this before I go? Okay. Very good. Well, thank you very much. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Julie Redgen, Redgen you said? Yes. Welcome. You got it right. Hello. Um, I just wanted to address um, what went on at the last city council meeting in regard to the animal sacrifice. I don't know whether you call it a law or um, a resolution, whatever it is. Um, I think in regard to Michigan law, you might want to look at that law that you passed again. Um, Michigan has anti-cruelty for animals. So it sounds to me like you're going against a Michigan law. Um, also, I can't imagine that your property values are going to be going up with this law. I wouldn't want to live here, and it sounds like this is a great city, but you know, I can't have little kids in my yard and seeing goats being dragged into a house next door. I can't go to the store and see these same things <coughs> in the neighbor's yard and trying to explain to a child that that goat is not going to be here long. I don't understand it. Some things need to stay in the past and we need to maybe come up with a different way of honoring our religion. Um, there's got to be, I know there is because this is the only city that I've heard of that has passed this. So there's got to be other ways to honor your religion that doesn't involve animal sacrifice which is very contrary to a lot of people here. So, and part of Hamtaramic is, you know, you've got to be good hosts to your visitors. And again, I don't want to come here to go, you know, to a nice bakery and see this kind of stuff. And worse off, hearing this kind of stuff going on. I don't want to hear goats crying. I don't want to hear cows crying. So this is not being good host to your visitors and good neighbors because everyone doesn't believe in this. So you are putting your neighbors in a bad spot. They're not going to be happy about this, a lot of them. And it's giving him ceramic and frankly, Michigan, Southeast Michigan, a bad reputation that this is, we all saw the news. Um, this is not acceptable to most people. And so I would like you to please reconsider this, maybe get together and decide how you can otherwise honor your religion and be good neighbors to all of us. And save the animals. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. And just because I forgot to mention, Julie is here from Novi. Andrew, can you help me with your last name? Oleksiak. Oh, okay, Andrew Oleksiak. Yemen's welcome. Three minutes, sir. Uh, good evening. I'd like to speak on uh, agenda items on the uh, Chief's Fire Department report and resolution 2023-11. Uh, um, first, I'd like to say thank you for the Chief for giving the report. It's been a long time. I think we're long overdue to have something of that type of substance uh, for the council and the public to digest from uh, our administration on the fire department side. So again, thank you. I think the chief's doing a pretty good job um, so far. So it's, uh, it's a change of pace. But uh, I, I wanted to speak on the auto aid thing again. I think there were some things that were missed out. And, and again, this is always a question that comes up between how many times we go to Detroit and how many times Detroit comes here. And we see it as a term of responses. But when we re respond to Detroit, we go with generally one piece of equipment with three people or four people on it. When Detroit comes here, they send a minimum 
of four to six pieces of equipment with four people on them. So, yeah, we go there more, but when they come here, the resources that they send are far more than what we can provide. So um, there was a SEMCOG report that came out uh, several years ago and basically said, you know, we enjoy the staffing of a very large fire department, but we only pay for the staffing of a you know, small city of Hamtramck size fire department. Uh, and I think that's huge on top of the other resources that we get uh, from them being able uh, to utilize repair shops periodically, the training academy, um, getting our health testing done there at certain times, uh, grant opportunities. So I know on paper sometimes it looks a little skewed, but if you actually sit down and look at the numbers of what we get and what we uh, give, uh, I think it's actually quite favorable for us. And the relationship that we have with them is largely because of the work that our guys put in. Um, the city of Highland Park receives zero aid from the city of Detroit anymore. Detroit won't come there because their firefighters couldn't get along with the firefighters in Detroit. So the notion that they will just keep coming no matter what is false. The, the relationship that these guys and the guys at the firehouse are doing to build with their guys on the street, that matters. And our ability to work cohesively and efficiently at a fire scene, that matters as well. And uh, I'll finish real quick here. Uh, obviously, I'm in support of resolution 2023-11. Uh, recruiting incentives, I think it's a step in the right direction, but it's probably a far cry from what's needed to continue to get people to come and work here. Um, we're kind of bottom of the barrel when you're looking at paying benefits, and we lost two applicants to the city of Inkster this past time. The people that were in the pipeline that our city spent money on to try to get hired. I mean, they were well into the process. And they, at the last minute, said, we're done. <coughs> Is it okay if I can get it, uh, an extension? Yeah, another minute. Thank you. Um, I think that's something that, again, it's, there's going to be a price tag associated with that. And we have contract negotiations coming up with the administration or whoever's going to be the administration at that point in time. Um, and I look forward to trying to iron some of this out. But I, it's, it's a big leap. And we know this isn't Rochester Hills. It's not Shelby Township. We don't have that type of money, and I'm not asking for that type of money, but there's going to have to be some forward initiative to try to keep people coming in. And as much as, personally, I live in Hamtramck. I've lived here almost my whole life, you know, full-time, 20-plus you know, years. I would love to see more people from this city applying and preference points to get hired. But frankly, right now, you don't even need it. If you have the certifications to get in and can pass a background check, you're pretty much getting a job. We, with the other employee that we have that's going out on disability, um, it's it's an open market. So I think this is a step in the right direction, and uh, I look forward to working with this council and the administration in the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Please, council, remember that the mayor is the one that approves the extra minute. Um, Nasser Hussein, from Tramac resident, welcome. Hello everyone. Uh, just a few miscellaneous topics. The parking and traffic like on the corners where the line is, uh, there is a stick. People think it's a uh, meter stick, so they go and they park there. But to discover later, it's a uh, prohibited place where people can't park and they get a ticket for $20. So I think the city, along with the DDA, should place these uh, signs no parking here to the corner. It's monitored by camera. Some people go, they stay there, they stay in the car, they don't leave. They realize if there's an emergency, they will just leave, but they get a ticket anyways because it's over sale five minutes. So I think the city, to keep the shoppers, should work out something more prompt and signage to, uh, to solve this issue. Uh, second one is the uh, street sweeping. I noticed a lot of uh, the dirt next to the curbs it ends up in the drainage system and uh, uh, blocks the sewers. So the city could use the water funds to buy a sweeper and uh, have it clean because this one, instead of paying tens of thousands to go inside and clean <coughs> up, if you eliminate it from the source, it'd be much, much easier. And I think the water fund has a lot of money in it, so you could buy a sweeper and periodically sweep around the city. Uh, the third, the logo. 
I think it's time to change it. Uh, smokestacks, industry, the city doesn't represent Hamtramck anymore. Maybe Lam Blasi with the arts and, uh, and culture, uh, they should have a contest to be able to redesign the logo and have one uh, that represents Hamtramck uh, much better than this one. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, that is all for public comment. Thank you. All right, we'll move to the consent agenda. And this is a quote from the single motion of no discussion. Item A, approval of minutes from January 10, 2023, regular city council meeting. B, approval of invoice register date ending January 24, 2023. C, approval of pre approved expenditure date ending January 24, 2023. D, Resolution 2023-08, approving amendment one to the Michigan Economic Development Corporation grant. E, Resolution 2023-09, approving second amendment to NSP subrecipient agreement. Okay. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No objection? All right. So we will move to the new business. And we have uh, item A, resolution 2023-10, approving fiscal year 2023-24, uh, budget calendar. I'll make a motion. Second. Mr. Mayor, <coughs> uh, as everyone's aware, uh, we are heading into budget season. Um, this is the calendar that we must approve by charter every year. Um, now it changes as we go. Um, we mirrored last year for the most part on it to uh, get a lot of it. Um, February, we hope to kick off the process officially. Um, on the 14th, we hope to have um, an earlier meeting starting at 6 uh, with a brief <coughs> presentation from our new controller. Um, and then moving into March, um, having two extra meetings on the 7th and the 21st, um, both on opposing Tuesdays, uh, in order to actually go through the budget with the various department heads. Uh, we scheduled April the 4th uh, for another meeting, uh, as necessary, of course, if we need it. Uh, my hope is that we can get through in two solid meetings, but if not, we have a third on the calendar. Followed up by a publication on April the 7th, another meeting on the 11th of the first reading of the appropriations, basically the budget, um, and then the 25th holding the public hearing during a regular council meeting, um, ultimately we're hoping May 9th to final approval of the budget. Um, if that's amenable to Mayor and Council, uh, I would ask that you adopt it. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Council. Um, so we can expect uh, Council Member Hassan's favorite line item budget at the beginning of March? February, start well. Oh. His favorite line item budget? Yeah. Department by department. He loves the line item budget. Oh, the li oh okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's March 7th and 21st. We'll be going, each yep. department head will be coming in, and we'll be going through each department, literally, yep. or head by department head. So uh, we can get through it as detailed as the council member Hassan wants, but we'll get through it. Yeah, we'll get through it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, but uh, I've gone through uh, you know most of the expenditures and revenue that it is. Okay. And so Councilman, we can obviously give mayor and council copies of the budget as it stands with the percentages of how far yeah, we went yeah. through it. If you'd like to see that. That's why I was. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that's why we can start looking at that one. Yep. Sure. So what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll send a copy uh, to the council uh, and the mayor uh, giving you last year's expenditure, actual expenditures, mm -hmm. the 2022-23 budget as amended. Okay. The 2022-23 expenditures and revenue collection as of a particular date, let's say, you know, uh, that day, well, you know yeah, whatever, that. you know, uh, <coughs> January 31st or whatever. And uh, then we'll give you, you know, how much of the budget is remaining or utilized and how much of the percentage of that item Lovely. has been. Yeah. And how much adjusted? Mm -hmm. Well, it just, <laughs> well, that is something. <laughs> That is something I you think. You need a little more time. I yeah. understand. No problem. No, no. I, I, I can even. I have a fair idea as to you know what kind of adjustments we'd be no. looking at. Okay. We'll be looking at, but it's too early for me to give you a definite. Okay. Yeah, definite. No problem. Yeah, Councilman, uh, keep in mind too that um, as our controller gets more acclimated, you'll start seeing him monthly on a regular basis, even beyond the um, you know our budget season. Um, and he'll present a monthly, you know, update for council and mayor. So yeah, I mean, I, you know, what we have to understand, uh, we have been short staffed all across no, all the departments. Just one, yeah. you know. <laughs> so uh, it's we're right now catching up, and we're doing our best yeah, to no, catch no, up no. and get to a point where we we can become so current that we can give you a picture of. Uh, our, you know, finances at any given point in time, but it'll take some time for me to get there. So, here's the one why I'm making a little big noise because of um, the council members. Uh, last year we had the presentation, three day only expense for presentation, not for the line item and department by department. So that is the one I try to this year go through all together. Then we all understand what we need, like you saw uh, the discussion from the fire department, whatever he's saying, there's a lot of new thing is coming soon. Are you ready for that or not? Example, just to think. Okay, thank you, I want to make a show. Thank you again. If you guys need any help, you can communicate uh, with us. You know, if, if you guys have any questions at any time and point, you can always reach me. Thank you. We're glad to have you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Any more discussion? No. No. Councilman Hassan. Yes. Councilman Asamiri. Yes. Councilman Mahmoud. Yes. Councilman Chowdhury. Yes. Councilman Jakowski. Yes. Uh, Mr. May, resolution 23-10 approved. <coughs> Thank you. The next one is resolution 2023. 11, implementing recruitment incentives for the Hampton Fire Department. I'll make a motion. Second. Mr. Mayor, uh, the chief, as we know, is here. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, his resolution that he asked us to bring forward, and we obliged. Uh, we recognize that we need it. So, chief. Mm -hmm. uh, this this motion's resolution uh, mirrors the one that you guys passed for the police, police department in September of last year. Uh, we're just trying to, like I said, just like the police department, we're trying to get uh, our last positions filled and uh, fill out our ranks. This is a way that we hope we can get some get some folks in here. Right. I think it's such a good idea. Hopefully, it works out. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Ready? Okay, Councilman Jakowski? Yes. Councilman Chowdhury? Yes. Councilman Mahmoud? Yes. Councilman El Samiri? Uh, yes. Councilman Hassan? Yes. Mr. Mayor, resolution 23-11 approved. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good luck Thank to you. you. See you in resolution 2023-12, approving award of the Kinef Street reconstruction project from Connect Street to Buffalo Street to Mark Anthony Contracting Incorporation. Offer. Second. Mr. Mayor. I have uh, our DPS, Director John DeAngelis, and I also have Charles Smith from Hennessy Engineering. Um, to answer any questions if you have any, um, but I could probably talk about a lot of it. So um, generally, I know we're used to Tiffany. 
<laughs> she's here quite often. Um, but this is an MDOT um, project. Um, it's federal funding and MDOT has to control it. Um, it's, this was actually prepared by Troy, which is another Hennessy employee that specializes in the MDOT. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here. Um, Mr. Smith, um, who I'm glad is here tonight because you might see him out from um, the field, generally runs the field operations. So uh, not a frequent flyer at our council meetings, but always in the city uh, watching the job sites and making making sure they're good to go. Um, did you want to explain a little or you want me to No, continue? you're doing fine. I mean. so, so basically put, um, you know, this is 81% of this is paid by federal funding. Uh, MDOT controls it in its, in its entirety, including the bidding process. Um, MDOT hosted a bid. Um, the lowest bidder came in, and that's the um, the one listed on here. Uh, what is it, Mark? Mark, Mark Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. Um, construction, um, and we're encouraging you to pass that, as you know, I'm not did. Um, if next resolution D is the companion resolution to this, uh, basically instructing us to um, sign the contract with MDOT and also have Hennessy do the engineering part of it, which is very difficult for us. Um, probably should have put these in a reverse to be completely candid with you, um, but we were kind of rushing a little bit at the last minute to get them through. But it, uh, it's basically the Conant to Buffalo in its entirety, pulling out all the concrete. Uh, sidewalks too, right? Sidewalks, oh, yeah. yeah, ADA yeah. ramps, sidewalks, uh, storms, storm drains, and of course, complete road removal from back curb to back curb. Basically, just like what happened between I-75 and Kinef. Correct. Um, and then ultimately, as you know, we'll have one more section to do. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council. How about how long is this project expected to take and like what dates? I didn't... Like, September. Okay. Uh, we're looking to start this project in April and we're looking to September for our completion. So the whole summer? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's going to be pretty inconvenient for the residents on Kinef, but... Mm -hmm. Not really. Out, no. one, yeah. Only one lane open. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's really no way to get around it. Right. Yeah. We'll continue Progress that same is. process. It'll still be one lane open. We'll try to get traffic through as best as possible. But you know, we'll have that sequence set up so you know we can get uh, emergency through as best as possible. But this is the best laid plan for right now. But the good news is it'll be all brand new and beautiful. Yeah. That's all that's all we need this. Oh, we need in Okay. Looking forward to seeing. All right. You. Thank you, sir. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman El-Samiri? Uh, yes. Councilman Hassan? Yes. Councilman Chowdhury? Yes. Councilwoman Joukowsky? Yes. Councilman Mahmoud? Yes. Mr. Mayor, Resolution 2312, approved. Thank you. Next one is Resolution 2023-13, approving contract with Michigan Department of Transportation and Hennessy Engineers for the Kniff Street to Construction Project, Conant Street to Buffalo Street. Make a motion. I'll second. Mr. Mayor, as I stated, uh, companion resolution <coughs> to the one we just approved, um, just officially awarding the contract to M M uh, Bishop Carter of Transportation and Hennessy. Okay. Okay. Councilman Hassan? Yes. Councilman <coughs> Al-Samiri? Uh, yes. Councilman Mahmoud? Yes. Councilman Chowdhury? Yes. Councilwoman Joukowsky? Yes. Mr. Mayor, Resolution 23-13 approved. Okay, thank you. All right, we move to the report. Um, I'll start with my report. Um, not much to say. Uh, this week has been um, we have been busy dealing with the media uh, regarding the pressing issue of the Nazi flag that was mm -hmm. uh, raised in, on one of the houses on Dorms Street. Um, so many media, um, newspaper or TV stations reach out to us investigating the situation and uh, some of them asking us and some residents too and some people even from outside of Hantram to take action against this but we can't by it is protected by the First Amendment to express your uh, opinion even hate speech is protected unfortunately Hate crime is not, but hate speech is. So um, the city cannot intervene, but we all uh, stood up as one united community against this. And like I said, one person expressed his hate speech, a whole community expressed love speech. Uh, and when you read on the history of such act in 1969, there was Supreme Court uh, 
ruled on, in favor of one of the members of KKK in Ohio uh, and gave him the right, protect his right to express his hate speech and call to violence. Even calling to violence is, is protected, but inciting violence is, is, is not. So um, I'm glad that our community c came all together against this, and uh, that's what we keep telling the media. Um, um, so we had media reaching out to us even from out of the state. Washington Post just reached out to me last night, but they want to contact Danny, a long interview. Um, so uh, this was the pressing issue this week, and um, it is a good sign that our community is alert and aware of any um, hate, hateful behavior. Uh, so uh, other than that, I, was in, I have been involved in many uh, events in the past two weeks. One of them, I attended the grand opening of the World Peace Outreach, a big organization at Redford. Um, so many people came together from different backgrounds, uh, Muslims, Christian, Jewish, Hindu, uh, and, and so many people came together. Um, it was a good event. Uh, that showed tolerance and acceptance of each other. Um, last week, I also attended the grand opening of, uh, of uh, Good Prize, which is owned by our DDA chair, even if it's not in Hamtramck, but he owns a similar store in Hamtramck. Uh, it was in Detroit. Um, I met Mayor Doug in there, too. Um, another grand opening for another business in Hamtramck for tax and immigration on Conan. That's, uh, possible uh, um, person who would compete with Councilman Chaudhry for tax <laughs> <laughs> on the same street. So uh, uh, yeah, other than that, um, being involved in so many community events, weddings, um, funerals, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Uh, that's all I have for my report today. And we'll move to the Mayor Pro Tem report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So. Uh, no, no major report, only requesting residents. If you see somebody suspected driving around, walking around, a report to the police. Because we know uh, what kinds of staffing we have. We don't want to publicly say that. Our police department is doing very good job and, and doing patrolling very good. But we need uh, help from community policing, from the community, and also from coach. Uh, everybody should turn on the light and um, that's why there is a lot of uh, stealing uh, happening to the, our community, it might gonna stop. So report to the police department as early as possible before the fact. That's why we can prevent lots of crime, lots of incident. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, city Council report. Mr. Mayor. Um, I just had two quick things that um, happen is one is uh, Council Member Mahmoud, uh, Lynn Blasey and Carrie Beth Lasley and I attended the swearing in ceremony for our new Congressman Sri Tanadar and we were able to have some really good conversations with um, elected officials in Highland Park and it was just a really nice thing to be able to talk to our neighbors about similar issues that we're having and things that we hope that we see from our new Congressman. Um, and then the other thing is I attended the American Human Rights Council's uh, new open house for their new office in Dearborn. They do a lot of work um, ensuring that law enforcement is um, cooperating with the communities and making sure that the communities have um, good representation and access to other options, especially against like, criminalizing youth. And so it's been a really interesting thing to follow that through different things and different like because I hear it from the nonprofit side and I hear it from like the city council side. So it's interesting to hear the different ways that um, the work that they do is talked about in the community and respected on all sides. So it was really nice to be able to see their new facility. So if you're interested in going over there, it's a beautiful <coughs> facility. It's right off of, what, what road is that? Lynn went with me. So is that Michigan Avenue? Ford Road. I don't remember. It's in Dearborn. <laughs> if, if you want to go, let me know and I will get you the contact information. <laughs> That's it. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? 
Mr. Uh, yeah? Yes. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank you, everyone, for coming out and, uh, you know, uh, for your due diligence. Also, and I uh, appreciate all those community members that are coming out and express their opinions what need to be uh, fixed. And I just want to refer to Mr. Nasir, Nasir right? What he said about the pool, there uh, need to be proper signing. I'll request city manager to get the uh, you know, quick action because we're kind of putting people uh, on failure because they don't know that if you even stand here, you get ticket. So we need to put aside the you know, not a standing points or whatever, you know, something that make sure they know of. Otherwise, we're fully putting them for failure. So, um, and uh, as Mr. Portemore says, see something, says, say something. This is very important for the old community members. You know, our police department, fire department, they're all doing a great job. As always, uh, I've been hearing people say, before you hang up on phone, our police department at the door. So this is, you know, this is a great compliment for you guys. And I hope you guys are gonna keep up this, uh, uh, you know, the protection that what you had. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. I'll say something, Mr. Chair, the last, always. Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, thanks for being here tonight with us, with your, um, valuable time. Uh, we attended Councilman Mahmoud, Councilman Mayor Portem, Hassan, and I uh, attended MLK, Martin Luther King, along with uh, interim city manager on Monday breakfast. So it was a wonderful time hosted by concerned women of Hampshire, Miss um, Madeline Porter. She was there and uh, as you heard from uh, colleagues that you know if we do not keep our eyes open and we don't look out for things that are happening or the neighbors there, there are strangers in a neighborhood or someone you don't recognize most of us we know each other we see them at a parish at the shopping an unknown person can be noticed easily you know and then if you speak up it will prevent a lot of these disasters many things uh, many crimes and you know things like it happened last night but 20 cars got vandalized you know uh, a windshield it wasn't just one just a small glass windshield that broke all the windshields 20 cars street after street uh, it was middle of the night late night many folks went to bed they had a school next day you know um, working in the morning uh, our, Police department and fire department, of course, they're doing a great job keeping the city in safe as well as city administration. However, we still need to gear up. We still need to step up more. Uh, it shouldn't be happening. It's 2.2 square miles. We can comprehend that. We can manage these cities and we can have our city more safer. You know, safety is one thing and safer is better. So I would strongly recommend that police department and our administrations, along with us, if we could do something to implement and do better, we I'm willing to do that. And communicating with the town, you know, with the city residents and constituents would be much helpful. So, you know, I'm looking forward to working with everyone. And thank you again. Have a good night. Thank you. Next is the city manager report. Yeah. Uh, not too much tonight. Uh, just want to comment that all of our staff is working incredibly hard and diligent to keep the city moving forward. Um, all the new hires, um, including the controller, new DPS director, and the various other staff members are settling in really well. Everyone's getting up to speed very quickly. Um, we're working on identifying new grants coming up. Um, the Distressed Cities grant that we annually apply for uh, we just actually signed out to the fire department. We're hoping that uh, they're going to apply for some equipment with it. Um, we just were alerted by a resident within this past week of uh, another potential avenue, um, which was I was very pleased to see actually one of the residents stepping up and giving us a very interesting proposal on perhaps uh, a tree grant for the city. Um, we're currently in the process of identifying um, local groups to work with on that. Um, and we've already began the process of engaging our internal grant writers and stakeholders to, to work on it, including a webinar coming up uh, real soon here. So uh, excited about all the things that are going on. Um, like I said, everyone's working really hard and we're, we're moving forward. Uh, I think I'm gonna just jump in because it's the city manager report and this sort of is couched in there. After some discussions, basically what uh, we're doing right now is I'm working with the deputy city manager, uh, Molly, and the HR department to provide the council and the mayor uh, a report of all the different various people who have 
um, applied at this point uh, for the city manager job. The cutoff has already occurred. Uh, there's a lot of people who have applied. So basically what our task is, is to provide the council and the mayor a transparent, full, and uh, unbiased, basically, opinion and uh, recommendation as to you know what our uh, what the choices are, but really is just a, a more of a breakdown for you, so you can see who is maybe even qualified for a follow-up interview, perhaps, just to give you guys an informed decision when it comes time. Um, uh, I don't know what kind of timetable the council and the mayor would like us to provide that to you, but we can do that as soon as possible if you'd like. Um, uh, at this point, I believe there have been over a hundred applications, but we need to take a look at those and see who actually qualifies under the ordinance and all that. So uh, that's what we're working on in terms of that. If uh, there was any questions um, uh, or if there was a timeline that you wanted to give us, um, but we could have it done even by the next council meeting if that's what you wanted. Mr. Chair, so I apologize. I want to suspend the law. Actually, I supposed to brought that those uh, discussion today and little mentally upset from the what's happened my family death so i'm glad uh, you already mentioned that one mm -hmm. and we'll discuss that one next council meeting yeah this didn't come from me i was yeah. just throwing no, it out no, there that's so the that. way I, our intention attorney and hr together sort it out right communicate with the assistant city manager because our city manager in terms city manager already applied so that's why and, and you guys make it uh, like a, we cannot go through the hundred of them bring a couple of like a five or, or one to ten or one to five this is the thing sorted out we think this is the one we have to work then we're going to have the, our subcommittee going to go through again because we trust you but we don't want to trust 100 percent then we our elected officer <laughs> that is the way well, i'm not offended 96.2 percent that's a good maybe Maybe you supposed to put the uh, interim city manager file down. Maybe you put on top. So that's why our subcommittee <laughs> gonna look at that one and then goes through comfortable. Then we'll move forward to the timing interview process. Absolutely. But thanks yeah. for thanks for bringing <laughs> we're gonna to us. basically go through the rubric that was provided by the subcommittee, which um, I've gone through and, and, and looks and is very very well done. Um, subcommittee did a really good job on the rubric and. Um, uh, obviously they had great ideas and we're going to incorporate those into our report uh, and, and obviously at the end of the day I want to make it clear it has nothing to do with me at the, uh, the, the choice, the choice is yours and we talked about this and basically as I said last time you all are the experts it's, it's the council and the mayor who, who decide and so basically in this choice you're the experts on the city we're providing you with just the data and, uh, uh, and our uh, sifting that data through the rubric and through also the law because there's an ordinance on, on this uh, point and so we're going to give you, I'm going to give you the legal analysis of it along with um, the, uh, the data analysis because obviously you, the council isn't going to sit through and, and sift through 105 applications when a number of those probably can't pass the first round of hiring. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. And yeah, so like he said, uh, looking at the rubric, it, it's very good, but so, you know, we have to take into consideration what the charter said and what the amended, um, you know, resolution that they put regarding the requirement and make sound judgment about people, you know, who have administrative experience and instead of uh, city manager experience. We have to take into consideration all of these things, mm -hmm. and then only the best will move on to the, you know. Exactly, and then this is a way for us to take a look at the administrative experience and sort of quantify that. So if somebody doesn't have any city work experience, we can say, well, they do have this, they do have that, and then obviously the council makes the informed decision yeah. based on that. Yeah. And, and the mayor, of course. And then, so it is the, the council and the mayor according to the charter that votes, so that's clear. Thank you. And so we move back to the public comment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. For the city manager for you? He just I did. Oh, I did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of got overshadowed. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I just That's figured fine. city manager was the topic, so we'll do it the city yeah, manager. Yeah, you throw me off. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Thank you. Uh, Lynn Lazzi is the only one public comment. I'll be quick. Um, 
I just want to highlight that um, we are going to get complaints when CANIF is shut down. And I just encourage us all to remind residents or visitors that are complaining that we can't become a better city without investments in our infrastructure. And infrastructure investments are going to be uncomfortable or inconvenient at times. Um, and then just a little tongue in cheek, I look forward to hanging out with you all on Valentine's Day to do budget <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Now, that's actually the city council meeting is on Valentine's Day. Right. right. Yeah, and just for the meeting. We can try to keep that one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Raiden here? I'm not Who's bringing cupcakes? Yeah. We're going to talk in two times that day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Right. 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 Thank you. Yeah, it's all right. It's 8.50. John, thank you. Good night. Thank you. Looks like you're forcing us to get out from here. Do you support him? I just said good night.